Hi, my name is Salwin Mulbro. I'm a poet and author from Port Elizabeth. And I'd like to make a case for the repatriation of Arthur Nokia's remains to Port Elizabeth. The repatriation of the remains of the black journalist in Etna Casa in 2014 was not only a welcome return to his place of birth, but also a restoration of his dignity after leaving apartheid South Africa on a one-way exit permit in 1964. The South African government should bestow the same respect on many other exiled South Africans buried overseas, or should I say on foreign soil. And I would like to make a case for the repatriation of the remains of Arthur Kenneth Nokia, a poet from Port Elizabeth in Nelson Mandela Bay, now buried in Wolvercote Cemetery in Oxford in the United Kingdom. Arthur Nokia died of a suspected barbiturate overdose on 11 December 1970. It's quite a controversial issue. Dennis Brutus, Nokia's mentor, claimed that he had died from an overdose of 45 barbiturates. Wow. Other sources again say it's less. But the coroner, however, declared an open verdict. Because he believed that Arthur's death could not have been accidental. Here's my case for Arthur's repatriation. Arthur Norkia's remains belongs in South Africa. Cecilia Potgieter, a colored domestic worker, gave birth to Arthur Nokia on 16 December 1942. The father was apparently a young Jewish man named Arthur Kaplan, who was thought to be the son of Cecilia's employer. Now, Nokia spent most of his childhood years in Causton. Incidentally, that's where I grew up as a child, and later in Galvendale. And those are two areas that Arthur Nokia fondly wrote about in his poetry. He went to Pedersen High School, and that's where he met his teacher and poetry mentor, Dennis Brutus. And he mentored him in poetry. And in 1962, they both received the Mbari Prize for Poetry. And after matriculating, Arthur Nokia won a scholarship to the University of the Western Cape and completed his degree in 1963 and that's prior to teaching for two years at a Port Elizabeth High School, Peterson High School. The discriminatory apartheid laws under which Arthur Nokia lived had a devastating impact and effect on him. And sadly, Arthur Nokia found himself between two opposing forces of black and white, while colors were reduced to being busters, bastards. 
Colleges were disenfranchised by the apartheid laws and distanced from all the others. Now, just like Netnakasa, Nokia took a one-way exit permit. In 1965, that was after he received a scholarship to attend Jesus College at Oxford University. And that's incidentally where Ethel Williams, a good friend of mine and poet from Cape Town, also studies. It was during those isolation years that poetry really started showing signs of deep psychological insight for Arthur Nokia. He searched for the meaning to his existence, an existence which the apartheid government destroyed and reduced to being a bastard. And he caused him to be a complex character and a tragic figure for obvious reasons. But Arthur continued to use his sharp powers of observation to write about life. I attended a book launch by Dirk Klopper, who wrote The Anatomy of Dark. And he said that many studies of Arthur and Nokia's poetry have commented on the, the prevalence of, of alienation in his poetry. And seeing this as a function either of political conditions in South Africa in his lifetime, or of Arthur Nokia's exile from his own town, or should I say his own country, his country of birth, which he missed and longed for. In 2017, Ethel Williams, a poet and academic from Cape Town and affiliated to Oxford University, called for just as I'm calling for the returns of Arthur Nokia's remains to South Africa. He even visited Arthur Nokia's gravesite and noticed, sadly noticed that it was surrounded by grand granite stones and honored graves. But Arthur Nokia's grave looked less than ordinary. That of a pauper a forgotten person, alienated, abandoned. That's the forgotten grave of one of South Africa's great poets. What a shame. In 2017, an impassioned plea for Nokia's repatriation comes from his surviving sister also staying in Port Elizabeth. Susan Potrita Late said in an interview with the Sun newspaper that she dearly wants her only brother's remains to be returned to his own town. But she doesn't know how to do that. But she knows he deserves to come home. Now, in conclusion, Arthur's memory will live on in the hearts and minds of all the people whose lives were impacted and touched by his poetry. And those lives that is still going to be impacted not by only his, his poetry, but by his humanity. And it's in my view that Arthur Nokia's repatriation to his country of birth deserves urgent attention and further investigation. I would like to read a poem that Vincent Oliphant wrote, and I would also read one of mine. Vincent Oliphant wrote a poignant poem about Nokia's imagined last journey titled a poet's last journey for arthur nokia 
You look on the world with eyes full of love. Those rose-tinted glasses, the magnifying glass of pain. Far below London's streets are going home with hardly a backward glance. Even the sun has turned its back, tinging the air to the colour of longing. You alone remain a face framed in a window. Slowly the dark closes the curtains. As always, you turn to your table, bowed over a sheet of paper, till your heart bleeds through your fingers. And when you emptied, as always, you go to your bed, face buried in the pillow, arms helplessly folded. As you embark on a journey to your mother, your motherland, with only the silence there to wave, on your last goodbye, ever deeper, ever more urgent into sleep. I would like to ask my for Athenor Kielis, it is Afrikaans. You look for the sin and the bastard in you, as half bad, a good. It is begroet op a windverwaaide paise strand. To your rug draai op your land, sy afweerende hand, was jy steeds verdwaas. Verdwaas oor die onwaardiging. Van jou waarde het as mens. Maar in jou gedichte kon jy terugkeer. Terugkeer na jou land, want dit kon jou nie ontwortel. Rissag, Athenokie. Rest in peace, Athenokie.